going on guys tj here with daily grind fantasy sports style bring you the edge for this five game nba slate saturday tipping off at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time uh super excited to be breaking this down for you guys but before we do that for those of you who are not members of daily grind dgfantasy.com the link is below if that's something you'd like to give us a shot we just did recently come out with a weekly membership ten dollars a week get you access to um, all our leverage sheets and everything like that everything that we have on our website we got free content obviously that we're continuing to cover here on our youtube channel and on our website now uh, we have a couple guys that have started diving into some writing which has been fantastic for uh, nhl mma nfl nba so go ahead and check that out um, and if you want to join the gg family the link is below if this is your first time stumbling upon the channel, welcome. If you could, please hit that subscribe button. If you could, smash that like button on this video. Uh, and then go ahead and throw on that notification bell so that when we do post some content, you do get a notification for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board and, uh, you know, the matchups that we actually have. We have Utah and Miami currently at a two and a half point uh, spread right now in favor of Miami. The over-under currently sitting at 211.5. We have the Sixers and the Bulls playing yet again. Bulls three and a half point home favorites. The over-under currently sitting at a 214.5. We got my Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs currently three and a half point favorites. The over-under has dropped from 218 and a half to a 209 and a half. We have Atlanta and Phoenix. Phoenix currently five point home favorites, a 221 and a half over-under. And then we have the Lakers and Portland. Portland currently five and a half point favorites. Over under sitting at a 222.5 and a half. And yes, the injury news, which will be pretty significant. We got Donovan Mitchell currently questionable. We also have Royce O'Neal, who had a knee injury that he sustained um, last game. Uh, Mitchell did just miss Thursday night. Should be good to go, I think, tonight against Miami. But if he does sit, there's going to be a ton of value there on the Utah side. Uh, for Miami, we had Kyle Lowry lead that game against the Celtics. He didn't play in the fourth quarter, so something to keep an eye on as well. If he's out, obviously an uptick there to a guy like Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler, I think. So um, two pretty big injuries to keep an eye on for that game. For Philly and Chicago, uh, Danny Green and Cork Maz both missed last game. Uh, they are currently questionable. If they sit, then a ton of value here for the Philly side. We have Tobias Harris obviously out, um, Thibel out, and Ben Simmons, who, you know, he has been out. Uh, Chicago, same pitcher, Kobe White, and then Patrick Williams out. For the Celtics, Jalen Brown, like Kyle Lowry, uh, did not play in that fourth quarter. He will miss tonight's game against Dallas, so that gives uh, some usage bumps to some of those Celtics. For Dallas, we are pending Porzingis. Uh, Kleba is out if Porzingis does sit, and they go ahead and start with Brunson again at the two, or, or you know, if Brunson starts at point. If he's in that backcourt with Luka, I really love Brunson, but something to keep an eye on as well um, if Porzingis does sit. Atlanta, no new injury news. Same thing with Phoenix. And then for the Lakers, we have LeBron James out. And for Portland, uh, no injury news currently. So those are the matchups and the injury news that we're currently pending. So let's go ahead and take a look at Fantasy Cruncher and see what we have in terms of ownership. Right now, we have Dennis Schroeder currently showing the most ownership at $5,400. We have Shake Shack here at $4,500 showing 33%. 0.5% ownership, and those are the only two guys that are currently north of 30%. Um, as you can see, we got Dame, Luca, Al Horford, Norman Powell, DeAndre Hunter, CJ McCollum, and Jason Tatum. Uh, they're in the top 10 in terms of ownership. I think that's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and Chris Paul. Chris Paul, those are the top 10 in terms of ownership. So let's go ahead and go game by game here. We're going to start off with Utah, Miami, and the Utah side of the ball. Obviously, the big thing here is will Donovan Mitchell and Royce O'Neal play? Now, if we go ahead and look at the popcorn machine from last game where Donovan Mitchell missed, we saw them roll out a starting lineup of Bogdy, Royce O'Neal, Joe Ingles, Rudy Gobert, and Mike Conley. And we had the four guys in Bogdy, Ingles, Mike Conley, and um, Bogdy, Ingles, Mike Conley, and Jordan Clarkson all had fantastic games. Um, against Atlanta so this is a pitcher that you're gonna have to monitor it's a tougher matchup here against Miami but if we do see a guy like Donovan Mitchell miss obviously I haven't run numbers yet for this because I need to know if Donovan Mitchell is gonna be in or out and luckily this is the first game at 730 so we will get news on Mitchell we will get news on Royce O'Neal before tip um, we might be live streaming tonight so if we're not DGF Fantasy the link is below if you want to sign up that is something that we will break down 
um, and we will have the synopsis of who you should prioritize for the Utah Jazz if Mitchell's out, if O'Neal is out, or if both are out. So definitely something to keep an eye on. The price tag on Clarkson, Boggy, and Ingles are far too cheap if Mitchell plays. Clarkson and Ingles would be the two guys that I would be looking at. I'd probably also be looking at Bogdanovich. He might play 36 minutes if a guy like Donovan Mitchell's out. And then if Royce O'Neal's out, I mean, shit hits the fan. Um, We could see Eric Pascal. Uh, So it's definitely going to shake things up here pretty drastically. I think if anything, Mitchell sits. I think O'Neal's going to be good. He played through his knee injury against Atlanta. Um... Or excuse me, it's the ankle that he uh, that he's got going on, the sprained ankle. So, it, you know, he was questionable going into Thursday night. He played. I expect him to play through it again here in a, in a tough matchup against Miami. Um, but again, if Donovan Mitchell is out or O'Neal, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. We're going to have a lot of uh, good, good value here from Utah. On the other side of the ball with Miami, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, two guys that are going to be carrying ownership night in and night out. Um, if Kyle Lowry does play, in terms of my value, Bam looks the best at $8,200. Matchup against Gobert, two really good defensive bigs, so I'm intrigued to see that. Um, I wouldn't hate going to Bam at $8,200. I think there's a couple better options, though, on the slate. Uh, Jimmy Butler's creeping up there in terms of his price tag at $9,500. Uh, I don't know if this is the matchup that I'd want to go up and get him unless I see a guy like Kyle Lowry sit. If Kyle Lowry's in, I don't really have too much interest in this Miami side. If he's out, yeah, bam, Jimmy Butler, obviously Tyler Hero, especially if Tyler Hero starts at $6,900, becomes far more intriguing. But again, too much injury news for this game to kind of have a, have a deep dive and kind of have some locks that we would like, especially for cash. So this is a game that you definitely want to go ahead and keep an eye on throughout the day. Philly and Chicago. We actually just saw this match, what was it, Tuesday? Yeah, no, Wednesday, right? What's today? Today's the 6th, that's Saturday. So 5th, 4th, yeah, it was Wednesday. Okay, I knew they just played. Um, We have a lot of injury news here, obviously, from Philly as well. Um, Thibel in um, COVID protocol. Obviously, Tobias is out. Ben Simmons is a puddle. Uh, so those three guys are out. We have to keep an eye on Korkmaz. We have to keep an eye on Danny Green, who both just missed on Thursday night. And when both of those guys were out and Thibel was there, obviously Thibel got the start. We only saw a seven man, or excuse me, an eight man rotation. Um, so if Thibel sits, we could see. Obviously, I think it would probably be an eight man rotation still. But that's just going to open up, uh, you know, another guy to start. I would assume George Yang starts for Thibel if, uh, or I think George Yang is going to start tonight, obviously because Thibel is out. But again, that's only if Danny Green and Korkmaz sit. So like this Jazz situation, you need to monitor the Philly situation because we have so much pending injury news, especially with Danny Green and Korkmaz. Um, If Cork and Danny Green sit, Shake Milton's the guy that you're going to be going to. He's going to be a cash lock at $4,500. He was $3,900. We saw that he was going to be off his minutes limit. He played 34 minutes against Detroit. If he's going to continue to play in the 30s, especially if Korkmaz and Danny Green sit, he's going to be a cash lock. George's Yang... Uh, George's Nyang, if Cork Maz and Danny Green sit, another fantastic play. Probably going to be a cash lock for me at $4,700. Far too cheap. He should be thrusted into. He'll probably start at the three or the four. I would assume he starts at the four next to Joel. Um, so that's another guy I like. And, you know, just like Utah, you're going to have to monitor the situation here with Philly. Um, there's just far too much injury news. Um, if. Cork Maz and Danny Green both play. I, I doubt Danny Green starts at the four. I don't know why they have him there. I assume George's Nyang starts. Um, even if Danny Green's good to go, I would assume Danny Green would move down to the three and then Cork Maz would come off the bench. Uh, but that's something to try and keep an eye on and monitor throughout the day. Uh, other side of the ball, Chicago. I don't have too much interest, honestly. Uh, you know, Caruso's cheap. DeRozan would probably be my guy here. He's been fantastic over this last, you know, week, week and a half. Um, he's been great ever since coming over from San Antonio to the Bulls, but especially this last week here. Um, as you can see, the stretch of games, he the usage has been absolutely incredible. He's the guy that I have rated in terms of the best value. I have him for 45.72 DraftKings points. With Pat Williams off the court, he gets a 1.1% usage bump. He's been a 1.33 fantasy point per minute, which is huge. So if you're landing anywhere, DeRozan at 8,300, uh, I do have, uh, I, I prefer him over a guy like Levine, over a guy like Vooch, and then Caruso, as you can see as well. He would be my second highest rated value uh, for the Bulls at $3,900. He gets a 1% usage bump with no Pat Williams. He's a 0.81 fantasy point per minute so far in the year. It was a five point, almost a 5.5 value. So 
I don't hate him as a cheap option, but again, I just think if if Conley, or excuse me, if um, if Mitchell sits for Utah, and then you know if Danny Green and Cork Maz both sit there for Philly, like that's where I want to go with my value play. So I think Caruso would probably become more of a tournament play at that point. But I think it unlocks the ability to go up and spend for a guy like DeRozan at 8,300. So I do think he's cash viable for now. Yeah, Caruso cash viable if those guys for Utah and Philly all play. I doubt that happens, so I think that ownership on Caruso is going to come down a little bit, so something to keep an eye on. Next game, we got my Boston Celtics traveling to Dallas. Um, Obviously, Jalen Brown is out. He did not play in that fourth quarter here um, uh, against Miami. He is going to miss tonight. (sighs) Sad hamstring injury for JB. Um, Not what you'd like to see. Dennis Schroeder at $5,400. I do think he's a really good cash option here. Um, With Jalen Brown off the floor, we're looking at Schroeder as my best value currently. He gets a 1% usage bump. He's a .89 fantasy point per minute so far this year. Tatum's been awful to start the year. He just has not been shooting the ball well whatsoever. So at $9,600... You know, right now, he's showing cash viable. We're showing Schroeder at 34% ownership. I don't think that changes much. Al Horford, $7,600. That price tag's just a little too expensive for me in a game where the Celtics only have a 103 team total over under. And then Tatum at $9,600 has the ability to shoot the lights out of the place, but he just hasn't been doing so. I mean, if we just look at his numbers, 3 of 13, 4 of 16, 8 of 22, 10 of 32, 9 of 22. Just has not been shooting the ball uh, very well as of late. Um, so I'm not too high on Tatum. I have some more interest in some of those Lakers guys with LeBron out, especially in what should be a higher paced game script, uh, opposed to this Celtics and da- da- Dallas plays way too slow. Um, so I'm not too high on these Celtics. If anything, I'd be going to Dennis Schroeder with JB off the court. And like I said, he is the best value that I currently do have for the Celtics. On the other side of the ball with Dallas, we are still obviously pending the injury news here with Porzingis. We do have Maxi Kleba out. If Porzingis does sit, I mean, Jalen Brunson's the guy you're going to go with, especially if he starts. Uh, He's been terrific these last couple games where he has started, seeing a ton of minutes. Uh, Just offense, his offensive side of the ball has been fantastic. Um, He's been taking a lot of shots, creating a lot of opportunities for his guys. So, uh, you know, that's where I would be going if we do see Porzingis sits. If Porzingis does play, I have no interest, honestly, in any of these Dallas guys for cash. Luca currently showing ownership at 25%. I guess I wouldn't hate him, but again, I have more interest in those Laker guys. I just don't really like this type of matchup here with the Celtics and Dallas. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a slower pace. I don't think there's going to be as many offense, offensive possessions as we're going to see in this Lakers in Portland game. So I love Brunson if Porzingis is out. If Porzingis does end up playing tonight with the back injury, I wouldn't be touching any of these Dallas guys. I'd probably be avoiding this game. This would be a game that I'd be looking at for tournaments, even though we have Jalen Brown out for the Celtics. Again, I do think you can go to Schroeder for cash. I'm up in the air on Tatum, but I think I'm going to stay away. Fourth game on the slate, we have Atlanta and Phoenix. Uh, Both teams completely healthy. In terms of numbers, I don't really have anybody here that kind of pops off the sheet. Eight net 6,500 is an interesting play here going up against Capella and John Collins down low. Um, He's probably a guy that I'd be looking at in terms of ownership. DeAndre Hunter coming off a fantastic game uh, against Utah and Brooklyn. Minutes have been there. Uh, He's obviously been starting. I don't know if I trust it at $4,100. He is a cheap option. Again, if we have Utah and Philly, those guys all playing, then DeAndre Hunter becomes a much more intriguing play for cash at $4,100. But if those guys are out, like that's where you're going to go. So in terms of this game, again, I, d- I don't really have too much interest in any of these guys. CP3 obviously looked absolutely fantastic against uh, the Pelicans. Uh, good game against Houston. Good game against Cleveland. The assists for CP3 are always going to be there. Always going to be double-digit assists for CP3. Um, I-, I do like the pace here for Atlanta and Phoenix. Um, I think it's going to be much more fast-paced opposed to those first three games, kind of like this Lakers and Portland game. So if you are getting some bits and pieces, uh, I can definitely get behind that. So if you're landing on a DeAndre Hunter for cash at 4100 I don't hate it. Um, Chris Paul at $8,400 is somewhat expensive as is Booker. I do like Aiden at $6,500. Just the minutes there with Aiden always kind of scare me. But, um, you know, I I think at 65 in this matchup against Atlanta, he is an intriguing play as well. And then in this last game with the Lakers, 
in Portland. Obviously, LeBron is set to sit. And if we do look at numbers with LeBron off the floor, we have Russ gets a 5% usage bump, AD a 3.4% usage bump. Russ at a 1.47 fantasy point per minute, AD at a 1.52 fantasy point per minute. You can see their usage rates are both right around 30 through 32, 33%. I have Russ for 57 DraftKings points and AD for 55 DraftKings points. That's where I like to go tonight in this matchup here um, for the Lakers in Portland. I don't really know why the ownership is really low on them, uh, but that's where I'm definitely going to be looking at as spend up spots here in this really intriguing matchup in the second highest pace game that we currently have on the slate in terms of over unders at a 222 trailing justice atlanta and phoenix game so with no lebron that's where i'm looking on the other side of the ball for portland a lot of people went to norman powell last game he looks fantastic against indiana i think it was the only time that i've seen him kind of carry some ownership he's looked great the minutes have been there he's way too cheap here again at 4800 dollars. so i like norman powell for cash uh, with everybody on the court he's a 0.97 fantasy point per minute i have him for honestly one of the better values on my sheet i have him for 29 DraftKings points so i do like powell as a cash play dame waiting on that big breakout game maybe it's tonight i mean as you can see he's yet to smash value um has not been shooting the ball well to start the year uh cj mccollum's been a lot better honestly than than dame has so far i think a big game for dame is coming 25 percent ownership i don't know if i can swallow that but we're gonna have to see and wait and and kind of gonna have to wait and see what goes on with that um with the jazz and the philly news so that's it guys just a quick breakdown for you um again i I think your your game plan here for cash there are some really good options right now schroeder milton obviously Uh, i do like norman powell deandre hunter but it's all going to be dictated on what happens with the utah news with o'neill and donovan mitchell more importantly and then the philly news with obviously thibel getting ruled out and now waiting on cork Moz and danny green like if all those guys sit then you're going to be going to utah for cash and you're going to be going to philly for cash and then spending up for studs you'll have tatum available you'll have luca available um if you want to go to the mid value uh, in terms of studs like a chris paul wouldn't hate it against atlanta um but I think I would be going to those Lakers studs with AD, LeBron, and even maybe Dame is somebody that I'd be looking at. So that's going to do it for today's NBA breakdown, guys. If you could, please go ahead and smash that like button. Um, And with all that being said, let's cash.